Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it is a Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. And on today's show, we got quite a bit to talk about. There is a Tennessee Titans player that was added to the AFC Pro Bowl roster. I'll tell you who that is and why there are two more Tennessee Titans that I expect to be added to the Pro Bowl roster and play in that game as well. Then, we are going to talk about Ryan Tannehill. The the conversation around Ryan Tannehill has been very toxic since the Titans lost that game on Saturday, and I have a lot to say about the quarterback situation and Ryan Tannehill in general. Then, we are going to talk about a weird conversation going on online that involves Derrick Henry. So, a couple of rants to end today's Thursday show and Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Excited to dive into the Tennessee Titans Pro Bowl edition. Before we get into that, do want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen to the Locked On Titans podcast, make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you do stream. You can find the Locked On Titans podcast on all platforms and always free. If you want to see the podcast on video, make sure to check out the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe over there. Smash that notification bell so you know when all of my content goes live. Hit that thumbs up button as well if you're watching on YouTube right now. Check me out on social media at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter at Locked On Titans Pod on Facebook. As I mentioned yesterday, still feeling a little bit under the weather, haven't been able to get into the office and break down all the film that should be coming on Friday's show if you can stomach the film breakdown from that loss to the Bengals, but that is coming ahead. Today, we are going to talk about a Tennessee Titans player that was added to the Pro Bowl roster, and that player is Harold Landry. Harold Landry had 12 sacks from the edge rusher position this year for the Tennessee Titans, his best season of his career, and came at a perfect time as Harold Landry is set for a contract extension at the end of the year. Landry was able to be placed on the Pro uh, Pro Bowl roster because Los Angeles Chargers edge rusher Joey Bosa is not going to be participating in that game due to injury, so a great honor, and Harold Landry's definitely deserving. Even though he didn't make the list initially, he's deserving of the honor. The edge rusher position in the NFL and in in the AFC is completely stacked. I mean, you look at a guy like TJ Watt, Miles Garrett, Max Crosby, and then Joey Bosa himself. Going to be tough to crack into uh, that kind of uh, a tier for Harold Landry. And I'll just say this now. Although Harold Landry is deserving, I just mentioned those four names. The reality here is Harold Landry is great within the Titans scheme. He's definitely not the level of player that those guys are where he could just line up one-on-one over and over nonstop and beat the left tackle with a different array of moves, handwork, all of these different things. Landry's great in the twists and stunts that he's asked to participate in with the Titans. He drops back as a second-level linebacker for the Titans. He's incredibly versatile, so he deserves the honor, but again, completely understanding how he wasn't on the initial list as he simply just isn't the quality of player that those guys are. But again, that doesn't take away from the fact that he deserves to be on this team and deserve to be the number one alternate for the AFC. And because of that, he's getting that spot. Now, he's probably not the only Tennessee Titans player that could be added to the Pro Bowl roster before that game is played before the week before the Super Bowl. There are a couple other Tennessee Titans who are primary alternates. Number one, Jeffrey Simmons, who absolutely should be on the team anyway. You make the all pro team, or yeah, you make the all pro team, you certainly should have made the Pro Bowl. That doesn't even make sense. Um, and the fans got it right with Jeffrey Simmons, which is surprising. The fans voted Simmons into the Pro Bowl. It was his peers and the other coaches that, that didn't completely unacceptable, quite frankly. But Jeffrey Simmons is an alternate. Long snapper Morgan Cox is an alternate. Left tackle Taylor Lewan is an alternate. Guard Roger Saffold is an art, uh, alternate. And Danico Autry and Ola Adaini are also alternates. Uh, Ola Adaini as a special teams player, though, not an outside linebacker. Now, out of all those people... I would expect to see 
probably two of those guys added to the Pro Bowl roster. Uh, I do think that the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Cincinnati Bengals and go to their third Super Bowl in a row. Uh, so that would mean that Chris Jones, the defensive tackle for the Chiefs, and Orlando Brown, the offensive tackle for the Chiefs, would not be participating in the Pro Bowl. So I am expecting that Jeffrey Simmons and Taylor Lewan do get added. Now, Lewan's, you know, coming off the ACL tear last year. He was trying to get healthy throughout the season. I could see him declining and just saying not worth the risk. Need to really focus on coming back strong next year. But Simmons would be a great addition, and he completely deserves it. So I certainly hope that he gets to take that spot. So Harold Landry on the Pro Bowl team for the AFC after Joey Bosa drops out with an injury, expecting Jeffrey Simmons and Taylor Lewan to get invites to go as they are the primary alternates for their positions, and their positions include a Kansas City Chiefs. So that'll be something to watch going forward. But we're going to go forward with this show. I have a couple of rants that I want to end today's show with. We're going to talk about Ryan Tannehill, who's been the hottest topic of the Titans fan base since that loss on Saturday night. I got a lot to say about him based on some of the conversation I'm seeing online. And then, surprisingly, I got a request uh, to give a little Rollins rant on a topic revolving around Derrick Henry that even though that loss was painful, I'm still surprised to see. Before we get into that, do want to tell all of you Titans fans who buy gas about an incredible app everyone needs to know about called Get Upside. My listeners are earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. All you have to do is download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or on Google Play right now. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up. Cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump ever again. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free. Use that promo code TOUCHDOWN for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot make up to two, $300 a year in cash back. And here's the thing, there's no catch. The cash back goes right to your GetUpside account, and you can cash out at any time directly to your bank account, your PayPal, or to an e-gift card like for Amazon. Just download the free GetUpside app. Use that promo code TOUCHDOWN to get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. That's promo code TOUCHDOWN on the free GetUpside app. Titans fans, let's continue this Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We just talked about some Tennessee Titans and their chances to make the Pro Bowl, along with Harold Landry being added to the AFC Pro Bowl roster. Now I want to dive into a little bit of a Rollins rant on Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill. Before we get into that, I want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. I also want to tell you guys about the Peacock and Williamson uh, NFL show. They're going to be live. That's Brian Peacock and Matt Williamson at the Super Bowl all week long. They're going to be in L.A. for Super Week. They're going to be bringing you comprehensive coverage, wall-to-wall coverage of the big game. Make sure you check out the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, part of the Locked On Podcast Network on whatever platform you do stream. But diving in here, got a little bit to say about Ryan Tannehill. So, I was the number one person to get on here after the game and and say what needed to be said. Tannehill choked. Tannehill choked. All three of those passes that he threw that turned into interceptions, you just can't make those throws, man. Even if it's a bad play call, you cannot make those throws. And the more we dive into what happened with that RPO that turned into the tip interception up, it just gets worse and worse and worse, not only for Ryan Tannehill, but for Todd Downing as well. But Here's what I want to say about Ryan Tannehill, and I've given you guys bits and pieces of this throughout the week. I've mentioned it a couple of days on Twitter. The conversation starts from this place. Whether you personally, yes, I'm talking to you, whether you personally want to admit it and accept it doesn't matter because it's a truth all the same. Ryan Tannehill will be the Tennessee Titans quarterback in 2022. They're not trading for Watson. They're not trading for Rodgers. They're not trading for Russell Wilson. It's not going to happen. Give it up. Let it go. You don't want to hear it, but it's the truth. Ryan Tannehill is going to be the quarterback next year. Now, after that, we can have a conversation. But Ryan Tannehill will be the Tennessee Titans starting quarterback in 2022. I hate to break the news to you. 
And you could get in comments and, you know, the little pieces that I've talked about throughout the week and mentioned this, people still get in the comments. Well, it's still possible to do a trade. It's I'll put it out on Twitter. Ryan Tannehill will be the quarterback in 2020. Well, you can't say that, man. You don't know that. A trade's still possible. Stop. Stop. Just stop it. Don't do it to yourselves. Just don't. He's going to be the guy. They're not trading for Russell Wilson. They're not trading for Aaron Rodgers. No one is trading for Deshaun Watson. Nobody, guys. Look at his situation. Read up on it. Nobody is trading for Aaron, or for Deshaun Watson. There, I mean, there's a better chance, in my mind, this is my opinion, there's a better chance that Deshaun Watson is out of the league forever, gone, maybe even in jail, than there is the chance that he's going to be on the Tennessee Titans next year. It's not happening, okay? It's not. So let all that trade stuff go. I ran the numbers. It's not that the Titans wouldn't make a trade. Yeah, the Titans would trade a first-round pick and Ryan Tannehill for Aaron Rodgers, sure. The Titans would trade a first-round pick and uh, Ryan Tannehill for Russell Wilson. Sure, sure. But the other teams aren't going to do that. Because the calculation is, you have to take on Ryan Tannehill's salary and the dead cap for the quarterback that you're trading away. So the Packers would have to take on the dead cap for Aaron Rodgers and take on Ryan Tannehill's salary. And in both situations, trading for Ryan Tannehill would cost those teams more money at quarterback than keeping Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson would cost them. They're not doing it. You're not trading for a lesser quarterback and paying more money. The Detroit Lions did that with Jared Goff. Everybody was like, what about the Goff deal? What about the Goff deal? The Lions wanted to intentionally tank. The Lions are in a total rebuild. And the Green Bay Packers, if they trade away Aaron Rodgers, it's not to bring back a Ryan Tannehill. It's to play Jordan Love. And the Seahawks, if they trade Russell Wilson, it's not to play Ryan Tannehill. It's to get a young quarterback that is inexpensive. That's the whole point of trading away these big, expensive quarterbacks. It's to save the money. They're not not taking Ryan Tannehill, guys. They're not. I'm sorry. And a team that would take Ryan Tannehill, it doesn't have a quarterback that's better to give back. Think about, like, the Panthers or the Broncos. Like, And there's no quarterback in the draft that the Titans are going to put on this team. I know we're all disappointed. I know we're all upset. But the reality here is the Titans are in a Super Bowl window. Now, I know my confidence is shaken. And I don't think they can win the Super Bowl, regardless of what happens. But there's no rookie quarterback that you're putting on this team and saying, oh, yeah, they got a better chance now. It doesn't even make sense. So Ryan Tannehill will be the quarterback in 2022. And the last thing that I want to say is, that's not that bad of a thing. I know that everybody's mad. I'm mad too. I'm still mad in my bones, man. Ah, But, but, Tannehill has orchestrated a damn good offense for two of the last three years. A lot of the blame here falls on Todd Downing as well. Tannehill is efficient. He makes plays. All the things that we talked about in Mike Vrabel's statement that I I discussed at the end of yesterday's show is still true. He's a leader. The guys in the locker room care about him. He's tough. He knows what to do. And I still believe that if you lined all the quarterbacks up outside of the elite five or six guys, Tannehill's still in that second tier, somewhere between 9 to 15. Somewhere there on any given day. You're going to be able to upgrade on that. Would you rather have Kirk Cousins? Would you rather have Jimmy Garoppolo? Uh, You know? I I just don't... I don't really... There is no upgrade here, guys. There is no move that the Titans can realistically make to make the the quarterback spot better. And any of these other moves that I'm talking about, these other quarterbacks, it gets worse. So... Not only is Tannehill going to be the quarterback in 2022, but based on the realistic options available, I hope that he is. I hope that he is. 
Maybe the Titans get lucky. Mike Rabel fires Todd Downing. We get Tim Kelly in here, and the Titans can play better on offense to the point where they can win the Super Bowl. I'll talk myself into it if we get Tim Kelly. I really will. I'm a sucker. I'll admit it now. But other than that, everybody just chillax. They're not trading Tannehill. They're not cutting Tannehill. He's going to be the starter in 22. And by God, if you're a realistic Titans fan, he's the best option that they have. Period. The quarterback class is way better next draft in 2023. So if you want a young guy, we're just going to have to ride this year out with Tannehill, see what happens, probably make the playoffs again, probably go one and done again. But I'd rather do that than the other way around. And then the Titans can trade up in 2023 after Ryan Tannehill's contract is gone and get the young QB that everybody's pining for. And hopefully that's the case. But we will see. But I had to get that off my chest about Ryan Tannehill. The discourse, the conversation around him is just getting a little bit off the rails lately, so I had to put that down. I'm going to have another Roland's rant for you guys uh, in the last conversation of today's show. And it's even more insane than the Ryan Tannehill one. So we'll get into that. Before we do, got to tell you guys about BetOnline.ag. It's a new year. BetOnline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue this march through the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains the number one spot for all your sports wagering action in 2022. It's a new year. That means BetOnline has a new updated desktop and mobile website. You can sign up there today and use the promo code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On. You're going to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposits, whether it be football, pro college basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. Make sure you don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers that BetOnline has available in 2022. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. BetOnline, where the game starts. Titans fans, we are going to cap off this Thursday edition of the Locked On Titans podcast discussing a Uh, A crazy conversation that's happening within the Titans community right now that I just got to iron out quickly um, before the end of the show. Before we get into that, I do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen. As for that second listen, make sure you check out the Locked On Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. It is presented by BetOnline.ag as part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You can find the Locked On Bets podcast on all platforms and always free. Number one. Want to thank you guys for sticking it out with me. Uh, Yesterday's show, today's show, I am still not feeling great at all. And I'm sure a lot of you guys could tell. Um, I'm I'm a junkie, though. I love doing the show. love talking Titans with you guys. So by no means is it a task for me to do the show. But I just want to explain. I know you guys expect super high energy, super high uh, enthusiasm, and uh, try my best to deliver every single day. But just... uh, Tough on me today, tough on me yesterday. I'm getting through it, though, and hopefully start feeling a little bit better soon. Um, With that being said, though, I want to get into the last conversation of the day, and I'm just going to do this quickly because it's so insane that uh, it's kind of hard to give it any real oxygen. I feel bad almost, but I was asked to discuss. I was asked to give a little rant on this, and uh, that's what I plan to do. Some people are discussing trading Derrick Henry. What? What? Look, I know Deonta Foreman played well. I know that Deonta Foreman played well pretty much the whole last half of the season. The answer to that is not, oh, well then just trade Derrick Henry and we'll ride with uh, Deonta Foreman who is sitting on his couch. In October. The answer is to bring Foreman back. And let him and Henry split carries. And actually give somebody. To Derrick Henry. Who can help him manage the load. Maybe. If you give enough carries to Foreman. Next year. Derrick Henry. Doesn't have to get hurt. And Derrick Henry doesn't have to miss. Two plus months of football. And then come back in the middle of the most intense game of the season. Maybe that's the answer. I just think it's crazy that, and this is kind of piggybacking off of the Ryan Tannehill conversation, but like, 
I'm angry in my bones about the loss too, guys, but the calling for heads and the, the need for drastic change is just not realistic or logical. Quite frankly, the response to the Titans' loss is not to trade Ryan Tannehill and trade Derrick Henry and just totally put the offense in a state of upheaval. That's not the move. That's not what you do. This Titans team is about as good as possible as it can get with, with the circumstances. The way to improve this team is to have better play calling on offense. That's the realistic route. Not to trade Derrick Henry. What? You know, it, I'm, I, I keep saying it. I'm as upset as anybody out there. But you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't get rid of Derrick Henry and everything that he does. All the numbers that show Derrick Henry's impact. Ryan Tannehill's pro football focused passing grade. Ryan Tannehill's yards per, uh, yards per attempt. Blossoming when he has Derrick Henry behind him instead of anybody else. You can't ignore that. You can't ignore the points per game and the yards per play when Derrick Henry's out there with the rest of A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. You just can't ignore that stuff and say, oh, the Titans lost a playoff game, trade everybody. It's just not, it's not smart. It's just not logical. You, you just can't do that. Anything, anybody saying trade Derrick Henry is saying it out of anger. You don't trade Derrick Henry. You give him help. Darrington Evans was supposed to give Derrick Henry help, and he's a complete bust. Now that you know Foreman knows what he's doing, knows the system, can deliver, you bring him back. And you have Henry and Foreman going back and back and back and back and back and forth. All season long. That's the way to do this. Not to trade Derrick Henry. You want to save money? That's not the way to do it. Derrick Henry isn't on some crazy Ezekiel Elliott deal. That's not the reality here. So, I think it's pretty simple. You keep Ryan Tannehill, you keep Derrick Henry, and you fire Todd Downing, which still hasn't happened to this moment in time. So, I'm just saying, just because you're not going to get the move you want with Todd Downing being fired, doesn't mean you make other bad moves instead. Just, just not the way to do it. They're not going to trade Derrick Henry. They're, they're not going to. And and if you want Derrick Henry traded, who's going to trade for him? Don't you think the reasons that you want Derrick Henry traded are the same reasons that a team won't trade for Derrick Henry? If you're one of these people, oh, running backs don't matter. See, you don't need to pay a running back that much money. You can get that from a Don, Deontay Foreman. Well, don't you think other teams see that too? They're not going to trade for him either. So, just. Everybody wants heads to roll, and I get it, man, but it's just not going to be what happens. We can only hope for a change of offensive coordinator to raise this team's ceiling. If that doesn't happen, then you're getting what you're getting. And hopefully the Titans can at least be a good football team and we can watch some wins next year rather than the Rust and Webster days of going 2-14 and 3-13 and, and, and and ended up with Marcus Mariota or Jake Locker. You know? Whatever, man. So... Uh, everybody relax. Everybody calm down. You're being ridiculous out there. But uh, other than that, I uh, did want to throw this in. I thought it was real funny. Rustin Webster, who I just mentioned, who was the Titans general manager before John Robinson, got an interview with the Raiders. <laughs> Idiots. What? Ooh. <coughs> oh, all right. I'm going to cough some more if I... Uh, if I keep talking about Rustin Webster getting GM interviews, give me a break. Anyways, I'd be a better GM than Rustin Webster. Not really, but I mean, come on, man. What a joke. All right. So anyways, I'll be back with you guys on Friday. Uh, hopefully I'm feeling better, can can get in the office and, and do some tape study and things like that. But uh, thank you guys all so much for the support. That's going to do it for me today. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.